nature is the best way to connect people and to connect people not only with themselves but with each other. Everybody coming together, enjoying the outdoors. I mean, everybody enjoys to be outside. That's, that's kind of the point. It, it transcends all kinds of identities. I think it's just a great way to bring us together as a country and people. So I'm, I'm very proud to wear that pin. All right, greetings y'all. How's everyone? Excellent, welcome to your REI Co-op Washington DC flagship. My name is Katie Anderson, general manager in humble service here in our nation's capital. Uh, and with me here is Brian Harewer, regional director of the Mid-Atlantic District. I'm honored to welcome you all here to our first ever annual member meeting to be held here on the East Coast and outside of the Pacific Northwest. Welcome. And I would love to welcome our senior leadership team. If I could have y'all stand up and just wave to our members here. We also have several store managers and directors from around the region and around the market. Can I have y'all stand up and wave? We here are proud to be your outdoor co-op, serving over 85,000 members in this market, encompassing nine stores and over 500 employees. Uh, we've been established here in uh, the, the DMV, as it is called, uh, for many years, uh, since 1990. Um, oftentimes on my commute, I, I live here in the area and on my commute, I uh, oftentimes pass underneath the shadows of our national monuments, uh, which is a really inspiring testament to the ideals of the outdoors, of who we have been and who we hope to be. Uh, here in DC, we opened this location in October of 2016. And since then, we've welcomed over 25,000 new members here to the co-op. Yes, 25,000. Those are new voices who believe a life outdoors is a life well lived. So for all of you, thank you for joining us here in the outdoors. All right. Thank you, Katie. Uh, as Katie mentioned, I'm Brian Harrower. I'm the regional district manager of the Mid-Atlantic here. Um, so, I'm going to tell you about our agenda tonight, what we have on tap for you. We are going to give you the results of our recent board election, which we've got some exciting news for you this evening on that. Uh, we are also going to, um, sorry, uh, have some comments and uh, stories from our leaders, and then we're going to give you some time to mingle. Uh, after that, uh, we're going to have some fun stuff. We've got a private shopping event for you, so hopefully when you came in, uh, you got a pint glass. Uh, if you didn't, we do have some still in the back of the store there. Make sure that you pick one up. In your pint glass, you should find a 30% off coupon. That's off uh, one REI private branded um, label item, so that's cool. And then there's a token in there as well, which is good for a half price off of a beverage over at our newest brewery in town at Red Bear. So a uh, very cool partnership with those guys, so make sure that you use that. The coupon is only good tonight and only good at this location, so make sure that you use that tonight during the private shopping event. That's just for you, so one-time opportunity. Uh, use it or lose it. And then uh, one housekeeping note, uh, just in case that there is an emergency, we've got uh, the locations for exit that are nearest to you. There is one in the back by the bike shop. Uh, there's one right over here by customer service, and then there is one behind us here in women's clothing. So in the event that you need to exit rapidly, use one of those locations, please. Uh, after that, it is my honor now to introduce our chair boardman, chair boardman, uh, the board of our, <laughs> chair of our board of directors, thank you, uh, Steve Hooper. Uh, but before we do that, um, we had some of our leaders and uh, board members out riding on the uh, CNO Canal today, which was really cool. They were lucky enough to get some good weather and uh, talk about opportunities in our local community. Um, so this is a, a great chance for them to, to kind of um, have those discussions when they're out, outside being authentic. And we've got a little video to show, so let's cue that up.
What I love most about getting outside is it refreshes you, it kind of clears your mind, and it prepares you for everything that's ahead. The one thing I love most about being outside is being present. I love getting out and running from uh, before work on a Tuesday morning just as much as I love getting out with my family on the weekend. Being outside on an amazing morning like today, sunshine, out with friends. I feel like I'm booked from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. And what I love about the outdoors is it's really the time and place when I can get out there, decompress, and reconnect with who I actually am. Right now, we're here at the beautiful Capitol Crescent Trail in Washington, D.C. It's part of the Capitol Trails Coalition, a coalition of all kinds of public organizations, volunteers, and nonprofits working to create an interconnected 800 mile trail system. People commute by bike, they run on these trails, they walk with their kids on the trails. It really is the lifeblood of the outdoors in the DC region. But the problem with our trail network is that it's incredibly disjointed. So we teamed up with our colleagues at Rails to Trails Conservancy and the National Park Service and REI to reimagine what could our trail network look like if we took a different approach to trail building. The Capital Trails Coalition and the trail systems in DC are an example of what trail systems can do in terms of revitalizing the local economy, uh, encouraging tourism and economic development, connecting people from different neighborhoods together, and promoting health and activity. The Capitol Crescent Trail is a rail trail that sees over a million users every year. That's bikers, runners, and a lot of people use this area to commute from Silver Spring to Bethesda to work in downtown DC. This trail system is the on-ramp for a lot of people in this area to other recreation. REI is changing the way that DC residents experience the outdoors every single day so that we have a system that works for everyone and that the outdoors are accessible to everyone. The Capital Trails Coalition will ultimately provide a game changer in terms of how DC gets around. Wow, I would work for uh, Katie any day. What a leader. Awesome, awesome. Well, my name is Steve Hooper, and it is a true honor to be here. Uh, I am the chairman of the board of REI, and that too is an honor. I serve with some of the most amazing other individuals who are on the board. I wonder if I could ask my fellow board members to please stand up and be recognized and show everybody who you are and where you are. So who are all these people and where do they come from? Well, we come from literally all four corners of this continent, um, all different backgrounds in the business world, but we have one thing in common, and we share your passion for a life lived outside is a life well lived. Um, and what does the board do? What is our responsibility? Um, we have a couple, and the main one is to make sure that the mission and purpose that the Andersons started the co-op with 81 years ago lives on in perpetuity. We have to make sure that what they wanted and the importance of the outdoor is never lost. The second or the most important thing we do is we do get to hire the CEO. That's our job. And then we also have to make sure that the co-op is around for all these next 81 years and we have to hold them accountable from a financial perspective. We like to say, if you don't have margin, you can't have your mission. And you know, in the retail world, it's a very difficult place right now. Very difficult indeed if we're gonna uh, continue to be competitive and continue to grow the co-op in a way that allows us to continue to serve all of our members around the country. Um, now, how do you become a board member? What's that all about? Um, we have a committee on the board, it's called NomGov, and it's their job to make sure that we're adding the kinds of people that the leaders of the co-op believe are necessary to help them make their decisions and to challenge them. So every year, one or two members is up for election. Um, and this year we talked to about 21 people, 17 were self-nominated. And uh, out of those, we did pick one new member to join us on the board. I should mention that all board members serve three-year terms. And every three years, we go through an internal assessment to make sure we are the right people to be on the board. 
And all of us can serve no more than 12 years on the board, so we always have turnover and we have continuity so that we get fresh new ideas. So that's who the board is, and that's kind of what we do. And I have one um, official function tonight. We have to have a member board meeting, uh, members meeting. We gotta do two things into it. So I will do what I'm supposed to do. We have to call this meeting to order. So I've just called the member meeting to order. How fun was that? Was that pretty exciting? <laughs> And we have two things to do. We have to approve the minutes, and we have to run through the election results from our last election. And to help me do that, I have Wilma Wallace with me. She is the general counsel of REI, and she will walk us through those items. Uh, oh, I have own. my own mic. So thanks, Steve. Um, and the fun just continues on. So there are just two administrative matters that we're going to cover in the next few minutes. And then we get to go on and actually have some fun. And you'll hear more about all the amazing things that we're doing at REI and how excited we're here to be um, in DC. Um, so the first thing we need to do is, if I can have a clicker, uh, this is um, our slate of four board members who were up for election. And um, I am proud and pleased to announce that all four of them have been elected to serve um, on the board of directors. So congratulations to our four board members. I'm gonna ask you to stand again, just so that uh, the membership can see you. So Tony, Liz, Bert, and Steve, our board chair, so congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So let me just spend a, another 30 seconds just explaining to you, um, we had over 1% of the membership respond through voting, and it's down a little bit from last year, a high of last year, which was 1.54% of the membership. And that might sound like a small number, but there's so many ways that, that members can engage with REI. 1% um, is actually above benchmarking trend. So when we look at other co-ops and how responsive their membership are through an election process, we're actually pretty highly engaged. So I wanna thank everyone who did take the time to vote and encourage you to continue to do so year over year for, your, um, for your, the lifetime of your membership at REI. I'm gonna really quickly just um, introduce each of the members of the board so you're reminded as to um, how amazing they are, how talented they are, and um, the expertise and the passion for the outdoors that they bring as they represent the membership. So Liz Hubner is our new board member. She comes to us after, with 25 years of deep finance experience in the media, uh, biomed and um, communications um, industry. She's way into cycling and I can testify for that because she was in that picture, in, in that video that you just saw and I was trailing behind her most of the way this morning. Um, she's also uh, keen uh, to take various adventure trips so really has a love and a passion for the outdoors. Tony Truesdale has been on our board since 2013. He has deep, deep retail experience. We just came through a board meeting and um, he asked a lot of questions around strategy and operations. So his 30 years of, of uh, retail experience shows up every board meeting. Um, he is also an avid skier and hiker um, out of Telluride, Colorado. And then Bert Quintana has been on the board since 2012. 2012. Um, he is originally from Cuba and has uh, lived in the Key West for um, most of his adult life. He has three nieces, enjoys kayaking um, and hiking with them, and again has again just deep uh, experience in the customer care industry. And again, a very, very insightful board member. And then our board chair, Steve, Steve Hooper, um, who's an avid cyclist. He does some crazy 33 mile trip every year, some crazy bike trip every year, um, and he, he is a pioneer in um, mobile tech and, um, and telecommunications. He's also very humble. So um, with that, those are election results, and I'm just pleased and honored to be able to serve um, with such an amazing board. Now I'm gonna move on to the second matter, which is to ask for someone to approve the minutes from last year's annual member meeting. 
So may I have a motion to approve the minutes? I think there were two, so thank you. And a second? Second, second. There were two seconds as well. Thank you, and let's have a vote. Are there ayes? Any nays? So moved, thank you. Steve, will you announce the end of the, the official end of the annual meeting? See how exciting this is? That's the end of the annual meeting. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I have one more thing I, I did want to cover with you uh, this evening. Um, remember the second th item I said that the board is responsible for, and that is hiring the CEO? We all know that we've been on a mission since early February to look for the new CEO for, for REI. And we did an exhaustive search across the country, talked to some amazing individuals from some of the most remarkable companies in the world, literally. It's interesting, uh, I know those of you who work for the co-op know this, but you're a really special organization. And everybody we wanted to talk to wanted to talk to us because of you and because of what you have done and the purpose is which you run your business. And after a, almost a three month search and talking to an awful lot of people, we came to the conclusion that the best person to run the co-op was already leading the co-op. So, on behalf of the board, it is our honor and privilege to introduce to all of you the eighth CEO in the co-op's history, Eric Arts. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> if I make it through half of what I intend to say tonight, I'm going to call it a good night. Um, I am, I'm, I'm just so honored and grateful uh, to be able to serve this wonderful organization. And it's special to be here. Uh, it's special to be here in the stores, or in this store. It's special to be here with our green vest. Vest, uh, see, I'm not gonna make it through. <laughs> and uh, it's special to be here with, with our members as well. And I can't tell you just how absolutely delighted I am that there is a brewery attached to this building. <laughs> because there is no doubt that uh, tonight I'm going to exercise that privilege. But um, I believe in the power of the outdoors. It was the center of my life growing up here in the East Coast, and it continues to be the center of my life uh, in the Northwest with my family as well. And REI, as Steve mentioned, is such a special organization. Um, unique in everything that we've accomplished, as well as so much opportunity ahead, so much opportunity to continue to steward the outdoors and enable a life uh, outdoors for the next generation. And for me, that's what this is all about. You know, I, I struggled tonight to think about how to uh, express what I believe is the essence of REI and the outdoors to me. And, and that just came to me um, as I reflected on a visit uh, uh, from a friend of mine, Ed, uh, not too long ago. And uh, to, to fully appreciate this story, you need to uh, know that I've had a lifelong fear of water. Never liked it. Yes, Paul, I do like to paddle in it, but uh, if I'm in the water, my toes need to touch the bottom. Um, so anyway, Ed comes into my office and uh, says, boy, you look fit, you look healthy. Uh, what have you been up to? Now, the first thing I would say is, uh, was trying to roll through my mind when I last saw Ed, because clearly I wasn't that healthy. <laughs> but I confess to Ed that, um, that uh, I had just completed my first triathlon, and that uh, someone very special, someone that I really admire here at REI, had helped me to find a trainer um, and, and a coach to help me figure out how to overcome my fear and um, and learn how to swim. And you know, I was, as I was so prideful in my story, uh, I could see that Ed was uh, 
uh, detaching from the conversation. <laughs> and um, Ed was reflecting on the fact that he used to be a runner, and he used to be a marathoner. Um, and the day before he and I met was the Boston Marathon, and he was sad because he had run that in the past. He reflected and regretted that uh, a friend of his had reached out to him to, uh, to sign up for a race in Moab, and he hadn't done so. And, and then we just started to continue, the, or we continued the conversation about what the outdoors means to each of us. We see it as the antidote. We have young families. Um, you know, when you get up in the morning and you go for that run, or you get outside and just breathe the fresh air, the day is just so much clearer and so better. And, and when you get those teenage daughters up to the lookout, up to the peak, um, you know, the joy, the connection, the hope you feel uh, when that occurs. And if you're lucky, um, they'll be skipping uh, on the trail as you uh, go back to the car. But, uh, you know, we, we really just, you know, lamented on the fact that the outdoors is, is just so special. And I knew in the moment that Ed was getting excited. And for me, that is the essence of REI, that we inspire um, and we, 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 we have this amazing impact as an organization and as a community of people that believes in the outdoors. I was inspired by someone at REI nine months ago to take on a new challenge uh, in, and overcome my fear. And unintended, Ed, Ed was inspired in the moment. And uh, what I would really like you to know, uh, especially the REI em employees in the audience, you inspire me. You, Every day, you know, you bring your passion, you bring your love for the outdoors to our customers, you help more people get outside, you have an impact in your communities. And members, just for showing up tonight and for caring and having a sip of beer with us, thank you, you inspire me as well. But the story of REI for me is all about inspiration and impact. And if we wanna talk about impact, let's talk about 2018. And here at REI, we, uh, we measure our business on four dimensions. The first one being our employees, the second being members, the third being our impact on society, and the fourth being our business. 2018 was an amazing year. We distributed a record $77 million to our employees through our profit sharing programs. We distributed $204 million to our members through dividends based on full price purchases. We distributed $8.4 million uh, to 431 nonprofit organizations across this country and touched 86,000 miles of trail. For those of you that are, that are keeping score, 86,000 miles of trail is equal to, depending upon your route, 32.1 trips across the United States. That's an amazing amount of impact. All of that was made possible by a healthy business. We achieved $2.8 billion in sales, a record, grew our business 6%. And our flywheel works, as you see above, we distribute over 70% of our profits. An amazing year of impact. And it's your impact. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about local impact. How about this store? I, uh, I stood in this building over, uh, six, seven years ago. And for those of you that are from the local community, you know the history of this place. Big cavernous building, uh, dirt floor, lots of equipment in here, bleachers. And this is the hollowed ground where the Beatles first played in the United States. How about that? And Becky Smith, she's somewhere out here. Uh, she joined us. She's gone on to do some, some greater things, but she opened the store. I had the chance to uh, hang out with our employees in this area or in this store this week as well. And it's just an amazing body of accomplishment to think what this was and what it is today. And, and it's not just about the building. It's about the impact that it has had on this community. And that's the point. Um, amazing impact. I also had the chance to do two special things this week with the community, with our community of nonprofit partners. On Tuesday, I had the opportunity to paddle uh, on the Potomac uh, with a couple of our partners, one of which is the TAPS organization. For those of you that are not familiar with TAPS, uh, they're committed to uh, the survivors, those that have survived uh, losses of loved ones in combat. 
I am a veteran, so I'm, I knew I wasn't going to get through this. <laughs> I'm proud of the work that you do, and I'm proud that REI is part of it. We offer um, um, adventure trips to take survivors out. The outdoors heals. And, and again, another amazing example of impact. I also had the opportunity, as you saw uh, on the earlier video, uh, to ride this morning with the, the Capital Trails Coalition. They are one of five rewilding projects that we have across, across the country, soon to be seven. And these re rewilding projects uh, seek to answer one very simple question. What if every city's urban core was connected by trail to suburbs and prime outdoor recreation? And you heard earlier, over 600 miles of impact, I think 800, maybe there's a little discrepancy there, but it's complicated. And it's an amazing organization that's working to connect this community to, to outdoor spaces. And I would be remiss if, if we were in Washington, D.C., and I didn't have something political to say. <laughs> My message on, on politics is very simple. Uh, united outside. The outdoors sees neither, neither red nor blue. The outdoors can, can unite. And if you think about the very moment that the co-op was conceived in 1938, when a group of 23 climbers came together to solve a problem, a better ice axe, a cheaper ice axe, the same is true today. We bring people together to find common ground to solve problems. We've been doing that uh, since we were conceived. We did it this week. Um, there were over a uh, hundred of us that arrived here from across the industry. We had over 120 meetings with congressional leaders carrying the message of, of impact around climate, around our national parks, around the backlog, uh, tariffs, you name it. But we came here to bring people together and it was amazing uh, what we accomplished. I just want to highlight that that work does have benefits. Uh, Mark, uh, for some of you that, that, that listened to his talk earlier, but about a decade ago, REI, along with the outdoor industry, began the process of trying to get the federal government to recognize the impact of outdoor recreation in this country. The numbers today would say that our impact is over $887 billion of economic impact and 7.7 .7 million jobs. Last year, the federal government finally recognized the impact of outdoor recreation by including it in the calculation of GDP. First time in the history of the country. <laughs> and I can assure you in, um, what was it, maybe 120 meetings that we had last week, 12 of which I was in, to the person, uh, congressional leaders, agency leaders, they knew, quoted, or referenced the uh, economic impact in their district, in their region. It is affecting policy, it is affecting funding. We are making a difference and, and it's really important work. Another, another achievement this year was, uh, just occurred in February uh, when both sides came together to, 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 um, to pass a bill, historic in nature, the Natural Resources Management Act. Uh, Senator Mikowski, Senator Cantwell uh, co-sponsored that effort and uh, you know, included in that uh, legislation was the permanent authorization of the Land and, Co Land and Water Conservation Fund. That fund here has, has um, uh, supported over 80 projects, everything from community centers to the trail we were riding on this morning, the CNO, CNO uh, uh, towpath. So, both of those examples, profound collective impact. We've invited our members into the, this conversation of impact as well. This year, we asked our members to help us distribute over a million dollars of our philanthropic effort to trails that they care about. Examples of some of, of, of that funding went to recovery efforts in Joshua Tree, uh, we restored the Backbone Trail in uh, California, which was de devastated by wildfire. Another example, we added uh, 88 trails uh, to some wildlife sanctuaries up in the Boston area. And we touched an organization right here called the Mid-Atlantic Mid Off-Road Enthusiasts. Again, another example of amazing impact. Thank you, members, for participating in that. 
And it just wouldn't be a year at REI if we didn't close our doors on the biggest shopping day in the year, pay, pay our employees, and welcome them to go outside with their family and friends and enjoy the outdoors. And thank you all, as another 15 million people joined the effort this past year, over 700 organizations, uh, just an amazing effort, our fourth year doing it. So, it's all about inspiration and collective impact. It's been an amazing year of impact, and, and I would say that the world is just a little bit better for all that we have accomplished here at REI. As I said earlier, um, it is a true honor and a gift for me to serve this organization and to lead this organization. Before I leave you, um, two final thoughts. Ed, I, I connected with him as I, I, as I was getting on the plane to come out here and uh, just wanted to check in on him and see how he was doing. It did work. I wasn't intended, but he was inspired. Ed's running again and he signed up for that race in Moab. And uh, one other thing, that, uh, that person that inspired me, that I admired, that helped me find the right coach to, to help me overcome a lifetime fear of water and, and get me out to, uh, to get healthy, and clearly I needed to. Um, you're going to see him a little bit later. That would be uh, REI's board chair, Mr. Steve Hooper. Thank you. OK, we're rolling. Three, two, one. I find myself at a point in life where everything I've done Tell me we're gonna shred it. We're gonna shred it. Okay. It's not so important. <laughs> My mind goes back to the people. We're like the luckiest people in the world right now. If only sunrise was at like 11 a.m. <laughs> that would be dope. And the patient, beyond patient, teachers that I have consistently had. It's really important to get out there and do the stuff that makes you feel this is what life is all about. Don't look. And now, I find myself in place to pass that patience and to pass that knowledge. I just get tired of being better than all the guys. <laughs> and to pass the teaching on to other people. When I finish this, I'm gonna feel like a badass. <sighs> and I almost feel that we most resemble a group of pilgrims, all shrugging their way towards Mecca Two, three. for uh, a slightly unknown reason. But we do know we're all here together. Hello there. My name is Ben Steele. Uh, I am honored to serve as the Chief Customer Officer here at the Co-op. I'm going to invite a, a few of my uh, colleagues up here to join us and introduce them in just a moment. I'm not ignoring them, but I'm going to introduce them in just a moment. Uh, Chief Customer Officer is one of those titles that you may be wondering, what the heck does that mean? Good question. Um, what it means is that in partnership with a lot of people, uh, my team and the, the teams that we work with every day work hard to awaken a lifelong love of the outdoors in anyone that we can touch and impact and to enable those folks to move into the outdoors. And I'm going to revisit a couple of words that Eric introduced to us, this idea of uh, inspiration and impact. We stand here as a group of leaders inspired not only by the mission of the co-op, but by the opportunity and the work that we have to change people's lives. And I'm going to introduce three colleagues, and together we're going to talk about some of the things that we did in our 81st year of existence as a co-op, as we enter it, that really inspire us. So first up, we've got Alex Thompson, who leads uh, Brand Stewardship and Impact. Alex's organization is really focused on everything from communications internally and externally to sustainability, giving, all those dollars that Eric talked about. His organization and team works to make sure they go to the right places to impact the right people in the right ways. You already met Wilma as our general counsel. Wilma does uh, amazing things, including running uh, the official part of our annual board meeting, which I agree was thrilling and exciting. I'm still coming off that high. Uh, and then Tim Spangler, I'm done with that joke, I'm done. Okay, and then Tim Spangler, uh, who leads uh, the uh, 12,000 plus folks who work in our 154 stores to be 155 stores on Friday when Grand Rapids opens up in Michigan. Uh, and together, as I said, the four of us are going to talk a little bit about 
how we're inspired by the work of the co-op and inspired by the work that we do in service to you. So I'm going to start by talking about uh, the idea of what does inspiration mean to the people who already have it and to the people who don't. My guess is if you're in this room tonight, you already have a relationship with the outdoors. You already know about the power of what the outdoors can bring to our lives. And I think that um, you know, we need to be careful not to just preach to the converted, not to just say, oh my gosh, isn't this amazing? Yes, this is completely amazing. Good, I'm glad we agree, high five. Now let's go out into the outdoors together. What we really focus on when we talk about this idea of awakening a lifelong love is how do we reach the people who don't quite have it yet, who don't quite know it yet? How do we share with them the incredible things that happen when you step outside? The curiosity that's peaked, the discovery that you find in yourself and the world around you, the connection with the people that you love and with maybe a side of yourself, maybe a healthier side of yourself that you didn't know was there. Maybe it was hiding, Eric, but you found it, right? And you didn't seem that unhealthy for the record. Um, but what we're really focusing on with a, with a body work that we call Find Out is how do we capture people? How do we spark their imagination? How do we show them what the outdoors can promise even if they haven't yet found it for themselves? So I'm going to share a couple uh, short pieces of work that we begin start, that we believe begin to start to tell that story at an emotional level. What does an earthworm feel like? The common earthworm, Lumbricus terrestrius body, is a fluid-filled tube divided into separate segments. The body wall consists of a collagenous cuticle secreted by the monolayer. Whoa. That, that second one always gets me a little bit. Um, this is important work because while I said it's really important for us to capture the folks who don't already have a relationship with the outdoors, the reason why is important. We spend 95% of our lives as Americans indoors. For most people, that's 70 years of your life indoors. For adults, it's about 11 hours of screen time a day. For kids, it's about seven hours of screen time a day. We are on what we've called the long march indoors. It's not good for people. It's not good for society. It's not good for health. It's not good for self. We believe, Eric said it, the outdoors is the antidote. The outdoors is the cure to a lot, a cure to a lot of what ails us, whether it's political divisiveness, whether it's depression, whether it's uh, a feeling of needing to be connected to the people around you, to yourself. Magical things happen when we step outside. And what we really want to focus on in a bigger way than ever before is, how do we begin to bring people in who don't already have that feeling? How do we pull them away from those screens and pull them into places where they're going to find something much bigger than that to, to find out what's out there for themselves? And we're doing that in practical ways, too. Uh, we want to talk about enabling experiences, right? So we have the REI Outdoor School, and we also have amazing, incredible adventure trips around the country. The Outdoor School last year put over, and I'm going to look for Leslie, make sure I get the number right, 300,000, 400,000? 400,000 people in the country last year into classes, into activities, into workshops in the outdoors. That's everything from literally how to ride a bike, which every year is our most popular class, and that's how to ride a bike, not just for kids, but for adults, all the way to I want to learn how to have wilderness first uh, responder training to be able to make sure that when something goes wrong in the outdoors, I can help somebody be safe and good. 
No one else is doing that stuff, right? And that's incredible to help people get out there. And there's also these incredible adventures around the world that invite you to find places you've never seen. That's from once in a lifetime trips on the other side of the planet to something close to home that just lets you, again, not spend a day in front of the screen, but spend a day out on the river, spend a day out on the trail, finding something new that you didn't know was there. Find out is an idea that we really want to talk about in big ways and small. We believe it's an invitation. We also believe it's a provocation. And when we awaken that lifelong, of the, uh, lifelong love of the outdoors, when we enable people to actually learn new skills, to progress, to gain confidence in the outdoors, we think a pretty powerful flywheel starts to happen. I invited these colleagues up here with me as well because we want to talk about some of the other things that we're doing. Uh, inspiring folks to step into the outdoors in new ways means reaching and speaking to people in new ways. And it also sometimes means reaching and speaking to new people. It's not uh, it's coincidental but not accidental that behind us we see outside for all. This is an incredibly important idea that animates our belief, our mission, our purpose of how we think about outdoors and outdoors enablement, outdoors awakening of that love, outdoors. I used outdoors like four times in five words, but thanks for letting me get away with that. Um, I talked about that notion again of like the time we spend indoors. We believe it's a fundamental right of every person to have time outdoors, and so we're on a mission to make sure that happens. And Wilma's going to talk a little bit about some of the things that we do to enable that and make it happen. So Wilma. Sure. Thanks, Ben. So I thought I'd start by just sharing a little bit of my personal journey. Um, I joined REI a year and a half ago, and I've been a member since 1986. I'm actually originally from the East Coast, law school graduate of, of UVA. Um, so I feel like I'm kind of coming back home. Um, but I was struck by, as I was doing research, um, just trying to understand more about REI as I was thinking about joining, um, the images and the storytelling around women and people of color. And it was, um, it was remarkable really, to see people who look like me, people who um, may not look a lot like me, um, but don't, aren't thought of as accessing the outdoors. And I found it intriguing. Um, I grew up in a small town in Connecticut, a former Derek, woohoo! Another, another Connecticut Yankee in the house. Okay, so I um, grew up in a small town in um, Connecticut, and it was a dairy farm, and our house backed up to a vast set of woods. And um, the outdoors has always been such a touchstone for me. I just didn't really think of it that way until I was an adult. Um, I tend to shun away from labels, but when I step back and think about how I spent my time growing up in a small town in New England, um, when I didn't have cable, we didn't have the internet, and when I was either bored enough or had done my homework and had you know, come back from school from sports, um, my parents' standing kind of phrase was, why don't you go outside? Now, maybe they were just trying to get rid of me, or they were trying to develop a lifelong love of the outdoors. So as I reflect as an adult about how I spent my time, while I may not have been going to Stowe to go skiing, I was learning how to ski with two sleds between my legs down our snow hill on our property. Or I, was, I wasn't kayaking down the Connecticut River but I was tubing with friends on the weekend. Or I wasn't going for hikes you know, and the Appalachian Trail, but I was learning literally every inch of the acres behind our house. And so my, my story to you, I guess my message to you is that so many of us access the outdoors in so many different ways. And one of the reasons why I'm so proud to be at REI is because there's no recognition of that. And there's not just a recognition, there is a commitment to making sure that the outdoors, outdoors is accessible to all of us, whether you look like me or you look like you. Me? <laughs> or you're oh. even you. <laughs> Thank you, Wilma.
You know, we're, we're standing in the middle of an incredible and amazing and inspiring space that is this store, and, and we know that some of the most profound connections at RI happen every day in our stores between the folks who work here and, and the folks who come here to, to, to discover something new, to, to find something new. But a store is a great thing if you already know what you want and need. What we want to think about, and what Tim's going to talk a little bit about, is how do you think about the role of a store beyond transaction, beyond stuff? What can we do to help inspire people in a space like this? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I um. I'll tell you what inspires me. What inspires me are the green vests working in our stores every day because um, when they're at their best, they're solving problems for customers. Eric talked about when the co-op was formed. It was formed by 23 people who got together to solve a problem, and basically that's what we're here to do. Uh, our teams in the stores are passionate about finding ways to get people connected with the outdoors. And sometimes that involves getting over a hurdle, a personal hurdle maybe. Uh, sometimes it involves access to gear. Sometimes it involves information. But we are at our best when we are connecting people and getting them outside. And I think our teams have done that amazingly well for as long as we've had stores. We're working to reimagine our store experience to really enable our store employees to continue to do that in a better way. And there's a lot going on out in retail right now. I just want to talk about a couple things I'm especially excited about this year. Uh, our store employees told us this. You members told us this. You want access to gear uh, in a more sustainable way than uh, perhaps what you've seen in the past. And so I'm happy to tell you that as of this year, uh, well, let me ask a question first of all. How many garage sale fans do we have in the crowd? Any art? Yeah, it's good stuff. For years, you've been telling us, we like the garage sale. We'd like to see more used gear. We'd like to see gently used gear online, maybe. Go out to REI.com today. We've got gently used gear online, and we'll continue to add to that program. So really excited about that, and we'll continue to grow that business. Uh, second thing he told us is, I want access to gear, but I don't necessarily want to plunk down a bunch of money and buy it right out of the gate. And so we listened, and we've expanded our gear rental program now across the United States. This is the beginning of it this year. We were in 30 stores. I think now we're in about 100. Uh, we've got plans to expand it further. But we're really excited about the fact that we've got another way to get people outside that doesn't necessarily involve coming in and buying something. And that's, um, that's what we're all about. So I'm very excited about those two programs. Another thing people come to us for, though, is advice and gear, and, and, and not just the product, but tell me how to get outside, tell me where to go, tell me who to go with. And that's what our store employees excel at so much. People liked it so much, they told us we, we'd really like to be able to have our own personal appointments with your green vest when we come in your stores. And so at the end of last year, we launched a personal outfitting program, which lets you go out online and schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with an expert in our store when it's convenient for you, you've got that person all to yourself. And that could be for a ski boot fit, it could be for a hiking boot fit, a pack fit. It could be for an for, uh, 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 adventure across, across the world somewhere exciting. So um, early days on that program, we've been going for about four months. We've already put 4,000 people through individual outfitter programs. And we're getting some pretty amazing emails and, and notes from some of these customers. I, I got one the other day from a customer who had been outfitted up in our Paramus, New Jersey store. She was going to the Himalayas on a mission first time she'd ever been out of the country, and she's heading to Nepal, um, obviously was a little bit nervous about that. Made an appointment at our store. We just so happened to have a sales specialist who'd been to Nepal and been trekking in Nepal and knew it quite well. Spent three hours with this person, taught her how to pack her bag, taught her how to unpack her bag, what type of food she needed to take, what type of fuel she needed to take. Um, sold her a few things, but also told her a lot of things she didn't need. Most important, convinced her she had to take a roll of duct tape along, because we all know that's the most <laughs> important thing in the outdoors. And the note this person wrote back was just effusive. She said, I had the most amazing experience. Because of the outfitting program, I was able to overcome all my fears of getting out there, and I had a fantastic time. And that's what our employees in our stores do every day, and I think that outfitting program is just going to allow us to do it even better. So I'm, I'm really stoked about that. That's awesome. Thank you, Tim. You know, we talk about being committed to fight for a life outdoors, but we also talk about the fact that people won't fight for something they don't have a relationship with. So what Alex is going to talk about is some of the ways in which REI is taking a, a leadership stance, stepping to the fore of big issues like sustainability, big issues like linking the power of the outdoors and health and that idea to inspire people to think about it in new ways. So Alex, could you share some of those stories? I can, but do you like my new top? 
I do, I do like your new top, and I noticed that you didn't have it when you first got here. I didn't. Yeah. That's an excellent yeah. segue for yeah. my piece. The, uh, I bought this mainly to celebrate uh, a big day. Um, congratulations, Eric. But this is a Cotopaxi windbreaker. It is made from 100% recycled polyester. I bought it because it has a nice color blue on it. But it also had a label telling me that it had 100% recycled polyester. And, you know, whether you're thinking about the outdoors or... REI or other companies, the problem I have as a consumer is it's difficult to make the choices. You know, when you're going in various stores or you're online or whatever it might be, it's kind of hard to make the right choices. And we realized a, a while ago that we needed to make it simpler, to make choices about the kind of stuff you're buying. And so a couple things I would just sort of talk about is, I think it was maybe a year or two ago, you can now go online with, on REI.com and you can search for your gear by uh, sustainability attributes. So things like responsible down, blue sign, if you know what that is. Is it fair trade? You can search for made in the USA if you want. All these kinds of things, you can now look at your product and select them digitally. And the thing is, we've got to make that easier in store as well. But this is just an example of one thing that made, it was easy for me because it was present. Excellent. <laughs> so, sorry. I, I, Don't be sorry. No, I thought you were also going to talk a little bit about the link between health and nature. Am I correct? You are correct. <laughs> was that seamless enough for you? It wasn't. <laughs> but the... Shall I speak about health and nature I for a second? It would be great. Let's I would do love that. that. Actually, I, I forgot to mention something. The, the piece of work that um, on, aside from a single item of clothing, the, there's a team back in Kent, um, and in particular, they're probably kind of aware of this because um, they think about it constantly, but they launched product sustainability standards yeah. last year. And it's less about kind of, can we just show people that these items are available? And it's more of what happens if we can shift the industry. So what the team put in place are our baseline expectations for every single piece of gear and apparel that we stock at REI. And this was launched 2017, and what that means is that when you come into REI, you know that every single one of our 1,400 brands is either complying with or on the journey to complying with product sustainability standards across, um, uh, across chemicals, animal welfare, fair labor standards, and so on and so forth. But the link there to the health and wellness side of this is that um, sometimes it's about what we wear. A lot of it is about how we experience that physically. And, you know, Eric spoke about this. A lot of people today have spoken about the health element. Um, and the, the example I would give of um, how REI is helping to shift from a, from a health standpoint um, is an investment that was made in the University of Washington. How many people we got here from Washington State? So that, oh, my goodness. So a lot of people know, a lot of people know University of Washington. Well, last year, REI opened um, something called the Health and Nature Initiative at the Earth Lab of the University of Washington. We invested a million dollars to um, pull together the best research in the entire country that proves the link between health and nature, and health, uh, health and nature, nature and health, I should say. The idea here is not just that we can prove it, but that if you can make the clinical case, you can apply the outdoors as a preventative healthcare measure through the healthcare system. But you need the evidence to do that, and there are researchers back at the University of Washington who are doing that work. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the piece on health and nature. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. No problem. So we, we could literally stand up here for a lot longer and tell you about a lot more things. We just wanted to share a few of the things that get us excited, that get us inspired, and we hope have a similar impact on the 18 million members we have across the country, on the many, many million more people whose lives we want to touch in some way and inspire to step into that life outdoors. So I'm going to invite Steve Hooper back up right now as we leave the stage, and uh, he's going to share uh, uh, one more one more bit of info with you. Thank you so much. More than 150 stores, more than 18 million members, and more than 13,000 employees, all dedicated to awakening a lifelong love of the outdoors for all. We share this love through meaningful experiences and our love of places. I love REI because I feel like when I come to buy something, I actually learn how to use it. The classes that you all offer, I go to those a lot. All my adventures and my memories are tied through REI and the equipment I get there. By making connections and sharing stories that give you that ache in your gut that you belong out there. The lifestyle 
around environmental stewardship and safety and fun and activity outdoors and like just the connection with nature. You're part of something with a group of people who like doing the things that you like to do. And through the commitment to quality gear that started it all. The selection's always awesome, especially for beginners <laughs> like us. We trust the people who work here that they can give us good advice on products and where to go, things to do. Over the last 80 years, we've built a strong community. Normally, I don't even think about going somewhere else. I just have a sense of ownership, having been a member for as long as I have. We are united under the belief that a life outdoors is a life well lived. So let's continue to welcome new people to the beauty and wonder of our wild places and inspire the next generation of stewards. Because when we connect people to the outdoors, they'll fight for life outdoors, right by our side. I have uh, one more um, important uh, thing to do tonight. And remember when I said that board members can serve only up to 12 years? Um, in the history of REI, in that 81 years, there have been 121 board members. Not that many. Um, and only 21 of those have served their full term. Uh, today, very, very sadly, we had to say goodbye to one of our members who has been on the board for 12 years. And he has had a huge impact on the co-op. He's so passionate about a life outdoors. I remember when I first met John, he was telling me that he moved his family from Austin to Montana so he could really take that to heart and have his two young boys spend a whole winter in Montana they were doing their schooling and whatnot during the day, but he was getting them outside all day long, and that was very inspirational to me. Since when John joined the board, REI had about a billion dollars in revenue. Um, and what you heard from Eric today is 2018, we finished about $2.8 billion. Uh, John had a lot to do with that growth and the leadership of the co-op over those 12 years. So I'd like to bring him up and have all of us recognize his service to the co-op and ask him to say a few things about his time here at REI. John? Uh, my wife said she wanted to be here because she wanted to see me speechless for the first time in my life, but it almost happened, but, but it didn't. Um, I, I, I want to talk about the future of REI. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked about REI as an institution that has an 81-year an history. Uh, I've been a member for 39 years, uh, you know, almost, almost half of the time that, that REI has been here. And I've had the honor and, and the privilege of serving as a board member for 12 years and four of, four of those years as the chairman. And I think a lot about REI as, as an enduring institution. You know, most of us uh, in any business background, you get bogged down in uh, how do we make the quarter, how do we make the year, and all of these short-term short things that, that business people focus on. We're one of the few companies that I've ever been involved in in my life where the management team and the board has the opportunity to look out and think about the next 81 years and, and the next generation and the future. And so I, I, want, I want everybody to think about the future of REI as an enduring institution of what are we gonna do to make sure that we're here for everybody that we wanna get into the outdoors and the fulfillment uh, of our, mi our mission to get everybody outdoors. And so I've come up with, with Endure as, as my theme, you know, as, as I leave the board. I wanna feel like we've got something that, that will endure forever. And, and the key principles that I've learned in, in the history of REI and what I think we have to do to adhere to to secure that future are just a few of the principles that you've heard tonight. Number one, the idea that, that every co-op member matters and counts, and every one of our team members here makes a difference. Um, you hear a lot of other companies crowing about their virtual community and what they're trying to do. We're 18 million members strong in a real flesh and blood community 
that really cares about the outdoors. And I think that's our, our number one advantage going forward. Number two, I think, is, is a relentless focus on the next generation outdoors. Getting that next generation outdoors is going to be critical for our long-term survival. So if you're a parent, that's taking your kids outdoors. But, but, but even more important than taking your kids outdoors, take somebody else's kids outdoors. Uh, take, take someone who has no one to take them outdoors. Or take someone your own generation who hasn't been. We all need a guide. We all had a guide in, 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 in our youth or somewhere in our outdoor journey. Uh, and all of us need to be guides for that next generation. Uh, the next one is we've got to consistently drive margin and mission. Not one to the exclusion of the other, but we've got to consistently balance the two. Our mission uh, of, of educating and, and getting people outdoors for a lifetime is dependent on us running a consistently strong and profitable business. And as Steve said, with, without margin, there is no mission. So we've got to do both, and we've got to do both well. The next one is, is United Outside, and you heard a lot about that. But, but, I, but I want to expand on that a little bit. We, we need to be united on the outdoor issues that join us. We need to be undistracted on the issues that divide us. And we need to be unafraid to have the discussion about those issues. <clears throat> Next to last, we're, we are in the business of retail. We, we need to be great retail innovators. We need to be great retail operators. Now, that, that's going to demand a lot of courage uh, on the part of the board and on the part of the management team to constantly hire new skill sets, to challenge the way that we've done things historically. Retail today is not at all what it was 12 years ago when I, when I joined the board. It won't look anything like it looks today. But when I look at, at people like Eric and Ben and Wilma and the team that you've seen up here, I have all the confidence in the world that, that we'll figure that out and continue to be great retail innovators and great operators. And then finally, the last one is expand. And, and, and I don't just mean expansion from let's add more stores, let's add new products, let's, let's add new outdoor activities, but, but let's have the courage to find a way to expand our market. Let's have the courage to find a way to, to expand the appeal that REI has, regardless of region of the country, regardless of race, regardless of gender, and regardless of economic status. Let's endure outdoors for all and forever. And thank you for the privilege of letting me be on your board. <laughs> Thank you, John, and uh, we will take that endure back, and that will be something we talk about at every future board meeting. That's a great message for all of us. Well, I want to do something really special tonight. Tonight's a really unique night. It's the first time the co-op has held a member meeting outside of Seattle in its 81-year history, and we... And we chose this part of the country very specifically because of what you represent for the opportunity for the future of expanding REI. I also want to take time for us to celebrate. Tonight, you were introduced to the eighth CEO of REI in its 81-year history. And I want us all to celebrate that tonight. So I'm going to bring Alex up here, and he's going to tell us how we're going to celebrate, what we're going to do, and how we're going to enjoy the rest of the night and get to meet your new CEO. Alex? Great. Thanks, Steve. We love a bit of forced fun at REI, so I'm going to tell you how to celebrate. The, uh, I got two great pieces of news. Uh, the first is beer will be served very shortly. The second is you'll be invited to uh, drink it. Um, I got a couple of other bits of, other bits of news. Um, listen, there's a, there's a leadership team. Oh, sorry. I need to be in this. Apparently, I need to be on stage leaning on something. Um, the other news is that we've, uh, we've got some folks around. They're wearing um, blue T-shirts here. 
Um, if you want to chat with anybody, just let them or me know. We'll make sure you're connected with somebody who knows the stuff that you're interested in. Um, before we break and the music plays, and I did have some requests on the playlist, I'd be very surprised if they were used. I would like to ask everybody to, um, to thank the team that put on this event. Uh, well done. Thank you. And, uh, and I'd like to thank the board of directors for throwing a curveball CEO announcement at us about 24 hours ago. So thank you very much for that. Um, I think that's it. I think the music plays, the beer is going to be available, and stay with us, enjoy shopping. Congratulations, Eric. <laughs>